Let me show you a better way You don't have to be another face in the crowd You don't have to live the way they tell you to Make your own way, the others will follow Texas.com, M-E-D-I-N-A, or Texas.com. As much as I like Kinky Friedman, he probably doesn't have that much of a chance of winning, and he'll just pull libertarians and independents away. I have looked at her policies, her platform. Uh, she is, I know, a Ron Paul supporter, and I'm going to support Deborah Medina for governor. So I am She's very, very excited. Uh, to have Deborah Medina in with us till the end of the radio show in 50 minutes. Deborah, it's great to have you here with us. Thank you, Alex. I'm thrilled to be here. You know, my, my, I'm proud of the fact that my family was at San Jacinto and was at Goliad and that the Ayers family on my mom's side raised Colonel Travis's son and that my father's family was involved in the founding of Texas was, was Mexican land grants in 1829. And I learned here that uh, you had relatives in the fight for Texas independence. That's exciting. Not a carpetbagger uh, like George Bush or these other people we've had down here. It's very exciting to have a real bona fide Texan. Spend some time telling us about Deborah Medina. Then we're going to go over your policies. All right. I born and raised in South Texas. Daddy worked for the phone company. Mom was a stay-at-home mom. Four kids in my family. Husband and I both went to public school in Beeville, Texas. I say that I grew up on a farm. Mama bought Mayonnaise, mustard, and ketchup at the grocery store. We raised everything else we ate uh, there on the farm. Butchered chickens, butchered hogs, butchered cows, milked a cow, that kind of thing. Uh, registered nurse by profession. Moved with my husband in 1989 to Wharton, Texas, and have been very active in politics. Your listeners may know that Wharton is smack dab in the middle of Ron Paul's congressional district. So I have grown up politically, if you will, under his mentoring. Um, understand a little bit about economics and the rightful role of government, the proper role of government in our lives, and uh, got tapped actually as I was in Houston preparing for an In the Fed rally, helping the organizers in Houston get ready for that first In the Fed. You'll remember we, we held those all over the country at every Federal Reserve Bank last November. And it was November a year ago that someone said, Deborah, why don't you run for governor? I knew right away that I didn't like the choices we were going to have come March of 2010. It took me about four months to decide I would get in this race, and I'm fighting for all I've got. We're seeing people jumping on board every day, and we really need help to make sure that we win this race in Texas. But you are the only choice, and have you been surprised by the explosive support you've been seeing? I have been. You know, people ask me every day, well, Deborah, how are you going to win? You don't have a lot of money. And I said, no, but I got a lot of shoe leather, leather and a lot of elbow grease. People are walking streets, pounding the pavement already today. Uh, I feel like we've got waiter, waitresses at the window saying, give me food, give me food. They are hungry to get out there and do the work. And it's, it's through the alternative media that that message is getting out. And we need to give people some marching orders today. I hope we can do that on your show, help people understand how they can help us win this race. It's real important. If we're going to be free, and I've been active in politics for a long time, I frequently say, would we know a policy that restored freedom versus one that destroyed it? If it stood up and slapped us in the face, would we recognize the difference? Those nations, historically, that have been the most free and the most prosperous have had in common private property ownership and gun ownership. If we're going to restore freedom in Texas, we better get back to owning our property and keeping uninfringed our right to keep and I agree. And the First Amendment. We'll be right back and talk about it. Founder said not only better best you own arms, you better know how to use them as well as any government army. Not only do we need to own guns, we need to be very skilled in their use. We need to restore that. You're not going to see U.S. military or other law enforcement rolling through hurricane-ravaged parts of Texas taking guns from law-abiding citizens like you saw in New Orleans. 
in Texas with Medina as governor. You're not going to see the federal government coming in to Texas deploying the U.S. military in Texas. We're going to recognize that sheriffs are the constitutional law enforcement office in this state. We're going to put them back in charge of law enforcement in their county and hold them accountable for that. We have got to get back to a constitutional understanding, a constitutional republic. You were talking earlier about this notion that a principal role of government is justice, laws that apply equally to all of us. It doesn't matter what your race, your sex, your economic class, your business affiliation is. You live in the United States of America. You live in the great state of Texas. We have a set of laws. This is the republic, and they apply to all of us equally and the same. What would you Absolutely. do about property taxes and all this big government garbage? We must remember property ownership and gun ownership, Essential elements of freedom, property tax has to go in Texas, not just for the economic implications there, but because it is the thing that is most critical to preserving freedom. You get rid of property tax in Texas, you raise the revenue that you need to fund the bare essential government services with the sales tax. No property tax in Texas. We're crafting, we need that legislation crafted. I'm beginning to say to people, we need to start writing that legislation today so that it is ready to be introduced in January of 2011. We get it through the session in that first five months and we get it done. We get rid of property tax. You were tax against the one world government. You were against the new world order that Ban Ki Moon called for in the New York Times. You are against the global carbon tax. I am for Texas state sovereignty, United States sovereignty. You cannot have it both ways. You can't be for state sovereignty and for those things you just mentioned. You can't be. So long live the republic? Long live the republic. Death to the New World Order? Yes, absolutely. So you are against the globalist? Against the globalists. But see, people also... Our average Texans stand up people Texas. People also rationalize and say a candidate isn't perfect, so they don't have to stand up and get involved. I mean, it's kind of a, but listen, great listeners out there, get involved, support it. You're a great lady. I'm really impressed, Deborah, and I hope that uh, you, we can have you when you're governor. Will you do that? I would love to do that, Alex. Thank you. God bless you. I'm going to go ahead and start calling you governor. we got to believe it for it to happen. Right. Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much. Retransmission starts now with all the key info on the streams at InfoWars.com. God bless you all. You're saying the man behind the plan to subvert Ron Paul, Inc. and to take away its non-interventionist messages teeth was Trig Olson. Yeah, he's the guy who knows what to do and how to neutralize, how to neutralize power. Okay, and now... Jesse, Jesse Benton is like, you know, he didn't even know who Ron Paul was in 07, okay? And he obviously neither... I mean, I, I don't know anybody on their staff who actually knows how to run a true de decentralized grassroots campaign. I mean, okay, let me give you an example. All right, 30 years of experience in name ID, 10% in his own state. Deborah Medina ran for governor, first time she had ever run for anything besides her own county chair, and got 18% in this state with $880,000, got over 250,000 votes because she ran a true decentralized grassroots campaign. You know, Ron Paul getting 10% in his own state with 30 years of political capital and a massive amount of money. Deborah Medina came in, ran for governor her first time ever, got 18% in a state, got 250,000 votes with under a million dollars, $880,000. That's about a dollar seventy-one per vote, okay? I have, um, when I said that I was going to have you on, um, you can't imagine the mail, pro and con that I received. There was a theme that ran um, against you, and that is, you're a 9-11 truther. Well, there's lots of, lots of mud that people would like to throw at Deborah Medina and make stick. The truth is, I'm an everyday, ordinary person. Um, I am fighting for the things that our founders fought for, those very basic principles of a constitutional republic, and I'm going to champion people that hold their government accountable hold me accountable, um, but uh, that's the first time I've heard that accusation, <laughs> so that's an interesting uh, one. Right. Here's, uh, then, let me, then let me be more frank and ask you the question. Do you believe the government was any way involved with the bringing down of the World Trade Centers on 9-11? 
I, I don't I don't have all of the evidence there, Glenn. So I don't I I'm not in a place. I have not been out publicly uh, questioning that. I think some very good questions have been raised in that regard. Uh, there are some very good arguments, and and I think the American people have not seen all of the evidence there. So I've I've not taken a position on that. I think <laughs> the people like in yes, America might think that might be a yes. Well, do you have uh, do you I mean, have advisors? Do you have advisors? Or I'm not going to take a position where okay, I, that's I think fine. Good questions have been raised and they're not do you, answered. Do you have advisors um, that advise you or people that are around you that are 9/11 truthers? Not to my knowledge. Would you, if you found out that there were, would you um, disavow them like the president uh, should have? But I mean, he escorted him out in the middle of the night. Van Jones was a 9/11 truther. Um, if you found out that people around you are advising you were 9-11 truthers, would you disavow them or allow them to continue to advise you? Well, you know, that's a, a federal issue. We're very focused on issues in Texas, on Texas state government. I'm certainly not into uh, mind control or thought policing people. Um, no, that's we've a pretty got big a one. Very diverse team in this state, and it is because Texans are standing shoulder to shoulder to support and defend a constitution. Um, I, I frankly don't have yeah, time to, I, you know, to go through and do psychological testing on people and know every no, thought or detail that they have. Um, I, I don't see us having a, a team of radical individuals, if you will. I think that there are certainly some that are looking, um, trying to use scare tactics. Um, I, you know, are there? No, I don't think there's people, a scare yeah, tactic. Uh, Deborah, you've, you've answered to the question. And be a part of our team that have right. not gotten on the team. Absolutely, there are, but um, I, I can't. Uh, yeah, I understand. You know, I don't know. Deborah, That's you've a answered lot of the context. Question. It's it's difficult for me to answer. There, I guess it would depend there's... on on you know how how um, vocal they were about that and how much I right. thought it colored whatever other talent they brought to the table. Yeah. Okay, Deborah, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and best of luck to you. Thank you, Glenn. You bet. Bye-bye. I <laughs> think... Problematic? While I don't, while I don't endorse anyone, <laughs> I think Why I can write her off the list. Shoot. Let me take another look at Kay Bailey Hutchinson if I have to. <laughs> Rick, Rick, I think you and I could French kiss right now. Let me now tell you something. He's this. a damn handsome man. <laughs> He's a damn He's handsome a, man. Looks good in a pair of jeans. Wow. He's a handsome man. Wow. The fastest way back to 4%. Cool. <laughs> Holy cow. I mean, I, and we're going to, I'm going to hear, uh, I'm going to hear from people in Texas. Oh, no. How could you take her? We just asked the question. Asked the question. Because we got all the rumors. I expected her yeah. to say, oh, absolutely not. Even if you are a that truther, is there's not an easy what she answer said. to that, which is, of course not. What absolutely are you not. About? I am not a 9-11 I mean, truther. Well, no, but I mean, at least give her credit. Yeah, give her credit. She told give the her truth. credit yeah. for she telling lie. the truth. Yeah, but you know lie. what? If you believe the United States government blew up the World Trade Center, there should be no other higher priority. Yeah. And I don't want to no hear No other higher priority. I don't want to hear from you. If you're a 9 11 truther on her side, yeah. it, it, save your emails. Yeah. Okay, so. If you have that interview to do again, would you I'd like to have, Yeah, I'd like to have the opportunity to say, what if, when you say 9 11 truther, what are you asking me? Am I one? No, I'm not one. Are there those out there? Yeah, there are. Um, we, could have, we could have done that better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Do you believe okay. the following? I want to ask you what you're on. You're backing this woman, Deborah Medina, in Texas for governor. Fine. She Absolutely. is something of a she's something of a truther. Are you? Are you a truther? No, 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 no. Glenn Beck tried to make her a 9/11 truther. I know Deborah Medina. We she have just gave never a speech the other day. She just truth. gave a speech. I'm sorry, sir. We have the table played again tonight. She gave a speech the other day saying that she wants to know what happened on 9/11 where the government was involved. She thinks that's a fair question. Do you? Do you think the federal government think... could have blown up those buildings? Uh, I think just like everybody else in this country, that I I want all the the questions answered surrounding that. Do you think there's a question about whether on. the federal government blew up those buildings? Is that an open question to you? Uh, I think that the uh, the investigation that was conducted was not done with independent investigators that I know and trust. You're talking like a That's politician, Sharp. You I are giving say, me a politician. You're talking like too. a politician. No, no, no. You know what politicians no. do? They dodge an answer. I'm asking you a yes or no question. Is there an open question where the federal government had something to do with 9-11? 
Is that an open question uh, I'm to just you? Saying, I'm just saying we don't know you're the truth, and I want to know no, the you're truth. You're talking like that's a pod. Oh, okay, I think so that's the an truth is answer. not. No, no, no. You're suggesting that well, there's something to. I didn't get on the to... show to talk about 9/11. 9/11 okay. is not anything. All I have tell, to do is say. Let me tell you, Chris. Let me tell okay. you honestly, okay? I begin no. every one of my speeches saying this is not the Tea Party is not about, or this okay. movement for freedom is not about 9/11. It's not about chemtrails. It's not about the assassination of JFK. This is about whether or not we're going to follow our constitution. This is, you know, Glenn Beck was really out of line, and I think he okay. owes Deborah Medina an apology. Here's a lady that's at four percent, goes to twenty-five percent in a matter of two weeks, and he wants to know uh, what she feels about 9/11. That is not going to solve our problem. That is not what the Tea Parties are after. They want to okay. know if politicians who promise to uphold and defend the Constitution will actually okay. follow that and keep their word. Okay. To Austin, welcome gubernatorial candidate Deborah Medina. Hey, Deborah, how are you? Good. It is nice to have you. Let's do two things. Let's take a couple minutes and wrap up the uh, uh, the the nine eleven thing, and then I want you to get to what you want to talk about for these remaining weeks of of the campaign. Uh, Nine days, I think. I uh, seriously. Yeah. Uh, it, well, indeed, so my assertion is it would have been over by now. Would have been over in a day if after the Beck thing you'd have said, "Boy, I'm sorry, I messed up. I should have identified this nine eleven truther movement as the despicable paranoid cult that they are. What a horrible, hateful belief to have in your head that nine eleven was an inside job. Why didn't you do that?" Yeah, I um, I agree with you, Mark. You know, I laughed it off whenever he he said I was a truther because I thought it was so absurd, and I and I um, I should have just said no, absolutely, I'm not a truther. I think it's abundantly clear I'm not a truther. Um, you know, those those things happen to us, and uh, we pick up, say, should have done that better, mm -hmm. move on, and uh, that's what we've done. Then there's just one other thing that's left, because not being a truther is great. I'm thinking, I, of course you're not. Of course you're not. But sometimes the, the wisdom is defined by knowing whom to praise and whom to, quite frankly, condemn. Someone walking around with the belief that America would do this to its own people, that President Bush and those around him would slaughter our own citizens in order to justify war, is a a despicable thing to agreed. believe. Agreed. And and if that's and you want to be on record is agreeing with that. Agreed. Yeah. I'm I um I was thinking in terms of the commission report, mm -hmm. not in terms of what, you know, individuals are out there doing and the the commission report I think is the is the thing that I was getting back to, none of which as you indicate has a direct impact on what's going on. Um, in Texas right now, with the exception of we ought to be concerned about terrorism and what's coming across our southern border. Indeed. Right, we let's... haven't addressed that issue, and we really need to be focused on that. We've, of course, uh, been out talking about how important border security is uh, for Texas. Hadn't taken it to the, you know, what impact it has on the country, but clearly it's a big open door right here in Texas, uh, and that does affect the whole Indeed. nation. Then let's segue into some other things with just one final thing. In appearances, since this dust up, what uh, I, I'm guessing there are two kinds of reaction. People who say, "Deborah, we don't care. We love you anyway." Some people who have said, I, "You know, have, have, you've had to do some fence mending." How how do you think that's gone, and and how do you think it's going to go working toward? Because we're in early voting now. I think that you know what we. We say we want people who will say the right, you know, who will be bold and courageous, and yet in a lot of times we want people who will just say what we, you know, we want to hear. I acknowledged that I knew the commission had had some concerns, and, um, you know, sometimes that makes people happy, sometimes it doesn't. I think people are ready to say, yeah, you know, she's she's not, she's being rational here. Um, we're asking her to draw an absolute when the expert commission didn't draw an absolute. She's being pretty courageous. Well, they, they drew it. They drew an ab Well, of course they didn't. But again, the truth or movement isn't about the 9-11 commission. It's about being an inside job. I mean, and, it's and, very I, specific. and I should have more clearly separated the two. And okay. I, and I, that's, yeah, that's where I am. I think people have, by and large, yes, to answer your question, people have, by and large, said, uh, we see this for what it is. It, it, there may be some importance to come back and address that, but right now, the crisis before us today in Texas, we got nine days of voting left. Um, and let's don't 
you know, be deceived that this is anything other than uh, someone trying to get us off message and off of the focus. We've got some real serious issues in Texas. If we want to talk conspiracies, let's talk the Trans-Texas Quarter deal. Let's talk the Merck vaccine deal. Let's talk the bailouts. Those are the things that are affecting us every day in Texas. That's what this campaign's been about, and that's where we've stayed, and we're 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 addressing that. We got some more bad economic information yesterday here. I think it continues to come. It's something we've been talking about for months now and have some real, I think, substantive um, policy ideas that will truly be a shot in the arm for the Texas economy and get us back to prosperity producing rather than this uh, tremendous recession that we're in. Ten days ago, I, I haven't yeah, if you just tuned in, people out there will misrepresent it, but the facts are the facts of why I am very upset with Deborah Medina running for Texas governor. From obscurity, it was really Patriot, Tea Party, and 9-11 Truth groups, because people that are awake a lot of times are 9-11 Truth, and they admit a lot of the Tea Party 9-11 Truth people, uh, including a lot of Ron Paul supporters, supported her and never asked her to get a 9-11 Truth. Then she said she supports a new investigation, she said it a bunch after the Glenn Beck interview, clarifying herself. We played that clip. And now she says that we're, quote, despicable bad people on a Dallas radio station, the guy that fills in for Rush Limbaugh and uh, Mark Davis. And I'm angry about it. And that's the way it is. It's Deborah Medina that attacked all the 9-11 truthers in Texas calling us despicable. And it's the flip-flopping. It's the fact that she gives all these interviews after Beck clarifying. When I support somebody... And they flip-flop like this on such a key issue and viciously call 9-11 truthers despicable for questioning the official story. That makes me very angry. Because you hear Alex Jones on one radio show, it's going to be the same as Alex Jones on another radio show. That's what I like about Ron Paul. You hear him one place, you hear him another, it's the same. Many of your supporters call themselves 9-11 truthers. They believe that the U.S. government was in some way complicit with the 9-11 attacks or covered it up. Are you tonight prepared to either embrace that rhetoric or ask those supporters to abandon it or divorce themselves from your candidacy? Well, I can't tell people what to do, but I've abandoned those viewpoints. I don't believe that, and that's all. That's the only thing that is important. And so I don't endorse anything they say, but I would like to take an opportunity to talk about the issue that we've been debating here for the last 20 minutes. So would you do... ask them to cease Pardon that rhetoric? Would you ask them to cease that rhetoric tonight on your behalf? Well, it doesn't do me any good, so if they care about me, they should. But the only thing I have control over is what I believe and what I say. I can't tell them what to do. So I don't endorse what they say, and I don't believe that. So please, could I participate in the current debate do, rather than sticking this out? Please do. Please do. No, I would... What's going on? I mean, does that hurt your feelings? Yeah, I agree. Um... You know, she didn't have to directly answer her opinions, but she could say people have the right to their own opinion, and that should be the end of it. We live in America. It's a free country. And, um, you know, she could have said it that way instead of trying to side with them. And I think she's just trying to play politics. Well, she's definitely going to hear this broadcast. Folks, if you support what she did, give her a call. Let her know you really appreciate her flip-flopping and saying that we're horrible, despicable well, people. This is more than suspicious. Let me give you her number. 877-WE-TEXANS. That's 877-938-3926. Ask her if she's going to flip-flop on the taxes. Ask her if she's going to flip-flop on the guns. Ask her if she's going to flip-flop on the NAFTA highways. Ask her. If we want somebody to talk out of both sides of their mouth, we've got Rick Perry, don't we? Yeah, and he's got better hair. <laughs> we tried for years third parties. Never got more than 1% than or 2% of the vote. Run Some amazing candidates like Michael Bednarik, uh, my friend. And we could never get anywhere near it. Finally, as we settled on Deborah Medina, we went forward. That was more than a year ago. Day in, day out, hour by hour, sometimes 24-hour days. And we found ourselves in the exalted position of actually being in the race. Of course, uh, Deborah sealed this with her amazing, outstanding performances at the, the two debates, where she humiliated and embarrassed to both Kay Bailout Hutchison and, and Rick Perry. And the momentum was ours. This was ours to lose. What would we do at this point to act like libertarians? No offense, but 
What will we do at this point to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory? Because you knew it was coming. And there's plenty of blame to share. The fact that I'm having this conversation on a national radio program, uh, I guess international if you count everybody around the world listening to us today, is not what I want to do. One week before the election. What I wanted to do was to support a freedom candidate against two Bilderberg candidates. What I did not want to do, what I not, <laughs> did not want to end up being a pariah for trying to do this, take down these Bilderbergers. So two for one on that one. You get Medina, you get me too. And there are people, there are people here in Texas that have been trying to put me out for years. One of those people is Alex Jones. Now I've kept my mouth shut. I have taken the high road every single time. I have never used my show or my website to attack other activists of any kind, whether I disagree with them or not, or whether they have been actively outworking to blackball me or not. I kept my head down and kept my work going and tried to be cheerful and positive and inspiring as much as I possibly could while giving you the information that you need to talk to your loved ones, your coworkers, people on the street to report the news and to break down and decode the news in a way that uh, I, I didn't feel a lot of people were doing. We still feel that we are a necessary part of the freedom movement. But now I find myself in the unusual position of, of having to hit back. Because I do not agree with the last uh, the 24 to last the 48 hours of brutal attacks against Deborah Medina for not answering the question, for, for agreeing with a neocon and trying to get herself back on message and back on track. Hi, I'm Deborah Medina and I'm running for governor of Texas. I'd like to take a moment to reflect on the exciting history of our great state. Not long ago, the state of Texas was a territory of Mexico. It was a wild and beautiful land, abundant with resources for the people who would tame it. The Mexican government invited settlers and come they did. Noah Smithwick, a German immigrant, said that Texas was heaven for men and dogs and hell for women and oxen. The Mexican government gave settlers in Gonzales a small cannon to protect themselves and their property from invasion. The Texas settlers became strong and independent, so General Santa Ana of the Mexican army issued orders to seize the cannon. When he sent troops to confiscate that gun, the Texans of Gonzales ran a flag up that mission flagpole that dared the huge Mexican army to come and take it. That day, the small band of Texans chased the Mexican troops back across the Guadalupe River. We now remember the Battle of Gonzales as the Lexington of Texas, as it was the first in the battle for Texas independence. That day was October 2nd, 1835. The settlers of Gonzales understood that private property ownership and the right to bear arms are essential to being a free and independent people. The same is true today. The constitutional right of Texans to own property is being threatened by ever-increasing property taxes and eminent domain. The right to own guns is being endangered by not only our own federal government, but also by a foreign government called the United Nations. The people of Texas have always been known for their tough and independent attitude I'm proud to say that my great-great-grandfather, who fought in the first Texas Revolution, passed that independent attitude down to me. I stand ready to defend freedom in Texas, and I'm asking you to stand with me by voting on March 2nd, 2010, in the Republican primary. I'm Deborah Medina, and I love Texas. We, we are in an information war, and we are losing that war.
shit.